for me it was a huge surprise when you say to me, I have to know James, because you know James is a Hollywood actor, so how he's connected to performance in any way. And then I met him and I was very surprised, James, when we meet that you knew about performance. There is an incredible difference between acting and performing. Both of you talk very loud. Both of you are very present. You are a very performance-driven actor and you are a very theatrical performer. <laughs> I basically said, James, you have to meet Marina to understand that it's completely the opposite of what you're doing. It's true on one level, but it's also true on another level when you really act and you get into this character in such a deep level that you become that character and there is a, even danger that you mm -hmm. lose yourself like, like a new mm -hmm. person, you everything. In performance I can't, but in acting yeah. you, you actually have to. When I've heard you talk about in performances that, that although you're not playing a character, there is kind of a, a performance mindset or something that you go into, right, where you can do things that normally in your life you're afraid of or that you don't normally do or exactly. that kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's a different, I think, a different kind of headspace. To me, the most interesting is this new element comes out, kind of border between performance and acting, what's real, what's not real. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you know, that creates new dialogue, that creates some new maybe territory to explore. With the theater and acting, you, you create a distance, which you don't mm -hmm. create in performance. Performance is no distance, it's like go to the bones, you know. But with the theater, you can actually play the character, even as your own self, but you have the distance. Yeah, Does yeah. the kind of documentation become a consideration in pieces in that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it, it, it awesome. used to be documentation. It used to be photographs, remaining objects. It used to be video and film. I think the new thing about this exhibition is it's really about re-performance. So it's really about having a score mm -hmm. and having a person there for two and a half hours, for one hour, for eight hours, and it's authorized. Because normally, you know, normally it would be just for the opening, maybe one performance and that's it. But never be the full time, three months. That's really, I think, revolutionary. I think the performances will be present as if they were a sculpture. One of your rules with Ulai, and I think maybe for a lot of things you do, is like there's no rehearsal. Is that right? Yes. So to a certain extent, you've set up a circumstance, but then the situation itself kind of imposes itself on you, right? You don't know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. And it's a new, and, as for me, as for the public active. watching it. And that's kind of incredible fresh, you know, because you, you don't, because it's no rehearsal. But there's another reason why I can't rehearse, because I will never have that kind of stamina, because public give you this extra energy. If I rehearse any of these pieces, in half of the piece I will say I can't do it. I think the same does when you really do live, live acting, you know, in the front of public theater. Yeah. There is something about the public that gives you this extra thing. This is going on for three months. And this, it's really endurance kind of experiment. And actors are not used to this. And how this time change you? Because if you will do something for three months, I don't know if it's acting anymore. Become real life. But in many aspects, Marina's show is a complete experiment. And so I think we are both a bit nervous and yeah. intensely curious because it's an experiment. But every experiment you do it and then you don't know the outcome, so. Because on the end, when I really can say, okay, we've done it, but we don't know yet.